Okay. Yes, ma'am. Oh my gosh. Season two, hot cocoa critics. Fa la 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 la. <laughs> You know what? Jingle bells. <laughs> jingle bells. Jingle all the way. Jingle, jingle. All jingle. the way. I am so excited. Thank you, Tasha, my friend from the ATL, for hopping on this Christmas podcast. Look, I'm going to tell you, this season, I am super excited. And I'm going to tell you, like, off the top. When you confessed to me that you were obsessed with Christmas movies, I was like, hell yes. Because the way that this Christmas verse goes... You get like a list of movies at the beginning of the season. And then you're like, oh, okay. I feel like I know what movies I'm going to look out for. So like for Thanksgiving, when I'm cooking or whatever, I'm going to watch this movie, this movie, and this movie. And then like you and I were doing our cute little banter before we got on, telling all our business. Y'all will never know what we were talking about. Thanks. And... Then you were like, by the way, there's a movie coming out with Lil Romeo and um and Sky Black. Sky, Sky Black, Black right, from yeah. All the Queen's Men. All and right. I'm like, I'll get out. Yeah. <laughs> they're not on the list. So I'm gonna let some of y'all know. Like, I know <laughs> some of you have been interested in, in doing this. <laughs> and I sent a list. That list has changed. I'm not happy about it. And this is why I have Tasha here tonight because children's movies have somehow hopped in the chat i'm like whoa i'm here for the mistletoe but, kiss at the end of a cheesy movie but it's adam sandler so he uh, he's in a whole different world of his own you know he's grown grown children he grown he's a child but he's grown like he really grown because he older than the both of us now he, he look i love me a good adam sandler come I'm, on now I, don't forget Adam Sandler. Do you remember? Do you really remember the first time you potentially ever saw Adam Sandler? Do you remember? I think maybe what was the movie with the was it Waterboy? Maybe for me. Okay. I think that's the only the one that I really, really remember, like when I really knew that it was Adam Sandler. Okay. You remember Waterboy? Oh yeah, I remember Waterboy, but I'm gonna say can you go back further? Because I don't oh, know. Yeah. I, that's the one thing that comes to my mind is, yeah. is Waterboy. Okay. So a lot of us didn't know we were looking at Adam Sandler because Adam Sandler wasn't like Adam Sandler then. He was just a co-star in the Cosby show. He played one of Theo's friends. And I will tell you the episode. The episode when Theo's... Okay, was it Vanessa? She dated, she went on a date with a dude and he came back to the locker room acting like he did more with her than he did. It was like the locker room talk episode. Okay. And it was like the first time we ever saw Theo like take up for his sister real hard. And they were in the locker room and I think it was his first ever fight scene. And he gets into a fight with this dude who claims he slept with Vanessa, but he didn't sleep with Vanessa. Adam Sandler was the homeboy that they were playing like basketball with on <laughs> <laughs> Go back and look. It's a young Adam Sandler. And uh, by the way, Adam doesn't even really look. Uh, he looks a little black. He looks like a little mixed. He looks like a little mixed dude. He might be a little black. He what is, little... is he married? Is Adam Sandler married? I don't even know if he's married. He's ma- oh, yes. Like, he's one of those, like, Hollywood dudes that's been married to the same woman for, like, 20 years. Oh, good for him. He ain't a... Oh, never mind. I can't say that. You yeah. can say whatever good you want. Good for him. <laughs> no, look. I'm good to know that he's wholesome. <laughs> when it comes to me because nowadays everything going off I don't know we got to check in honey Mm, (laughs) it could just mean that they don't have a prenup (laughs) or they might look they might be like normal people and keep their business to they feel correct she gonna stick by them look cheaper to keep her he probably ain't had no it's cheaper to keep her so that's what that is no just joking but no No, 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 I I didn't know he was (laughs) I didn't know he was married. But no, are you going to have me now go? I'm going to be tonight on Cosby Show trying to go Do back it. and figure it out. With yeah, the I did not know he was. Who didn't start on the uh, Cosby Show A Different World? Did, right. And I hate to say it. I didn't even realize that they had diverse friends. That's, my, that's the politically correct. Well, here's the thing. Because the way that. The way that they fed us all this information was through a black lens, but it was through like a black lens <laughs> that we that wasn't like stereotypical. So you had yeah. 
light bright Lisa Bonet is like the older sister at Hillman College with Marissa Tomei, who was the white friend, but she was never she was never called the white friend. They kind of leaned into her Italianness, but mainly she was just like the airhead in the dorm. They just let her be the airhead. And, and that's then, all, yes. And Freddie was mixed. We Freddie they knew mixed. that, but they didn't really like what did they do, dedicate they like didn't a half dwell on it. to it. Yeah. Yeah, I think maybe a little bit when we saw her, it was the episode when her mother came. Mm-hmm. You remember the lady that was her mother that was the <laughs> free world 70s yeah. California baby girl? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, that was her mama. That was about that's about the gist. Baby girl, about the baby girl with the wait. Honey, she she reminds, the hip mama. Have, have you seen that post? There's this guy on Instagram who posted this post like last week. He said, "You know what I realized at Thanksgiving? We find out all y'all's mamas are white." <laughs> He's like, it starts with the pictures of the food. And we realize when we see the green bean casserole that white people are afoot. And he goes off into like this thing. And then he's like, so all you mixed black folks are really, y'all have white mamas. He goes, why y'all hiding Cheryl? And it's gone viral. Like it's gotten over a million views. Because they're like, Cheryl ain't hiding y'all. She got y'all all over her Facebook page. Why are y'all hiding Cheryl? Well, you so, know, the crazy thing is we're bad funny. at about assuming. And I'll be the first yeah. one to raise my hand that I am bad because I ain't going to lie. I was watching, and I know this is off topic, but I was watching Go Basketball Wise Orlando <laughs> the other week. And I hate to say it. I like the trash. I can't. I, I do it. too. It shut the brain to all the way down. Just shut her down. Yes. Yeah. I don't have to. Think. So... The girl Megan that's on there, they didn't pull her from LA. She the mm-hmm. main one narrating everything. Megan. She mm-hmm. talking to the young lady Ashley. And I ain't gonna lie, I was thinking the same exact thing. Ashley had these jacked up locks in her head because I don't know who did her lock. She needs to go get one of that. <laughs> but <laughs> and y'all Tasha, Tasha is a hair, like a hair <laughs> guru. Tasha. Let me tell y'all something. In the bowels of the pandemic, when like you couldn't get an HD lace, Tasha was like, okay, I got one. I'm going to send it to you now. You want to take what you get? It's a body wave. Would you do a body wave? Okay, good for you because it's all I got. China is backed up right now. We real backed up. And they was in war too. She was like, you were like the Harriet Tubman of bundles. I was like, thank you, Jesus. (laughs) But look, the girl Ashley her block. So then the girl in the Omega was like, we just thought it was funny in the in the little confessionals. They was like, it was real funny. Cause she ain't well, how she got these locks and it's the ethnicity part of it, and she ain't black. Girl, this girl come back and say, Who ain't black? We all, I ain't gonna lie. I was like, huh? She was like, who ain't black? She was a black uncle. girl. We both think we both didn't already. We all didn't roll her off, but we just knew the chick wasn't black, but she was me. She's black. Oh, y'all thought she wasn't was, black and had we locks. We thought she was not. She had locks. She had, you know, Which like explain the why the locks, locks were so bad. Because y'all were like, we she don't know. Oh, she doesn't know. And she got them, but it ain't nothing. She does not. And I hate to say it, but that's where we wrong. She does not portray a black woman. Nothing about oh. her say that she's black. And so did the girl boy yeah. gonna say at the in the confessions home. So I bet you she can't say a damn line from Friday. <laughs> the fact that I forget 23 and me. I need look. Black can you culture, put, we don't can you subscribe rattle, to. Can you rattle off the Friday? We, can you say what, what they say in Friday? What they say in Minutes of Society? What they say in Jason? We Lewis? ain't swabbing Let's a cheek. The black move. Can you quote, what is it from the Temptations movie? Ain't nobody came to see you, Otis. Can you, do you, but do days. you know see? Let's line up, get in line. School days. What, what, you, what you know? <laughs> she don't. <laughs> But I feel bad though. I do, I do, but I do like if we're gonna do this, I just want to say this really quick. We need to take spades off the table because I am clearly a black girl and I cannot play spades, and that is very much an indicator of one's blackness. What were you doing in your dorm? What what was you doing your whole college years? Did y'all not play spades? I don't understand. No, no I was swimming 
five hours a day. And then I was pre-med. I was booked and busy. I was booked and busy, but I still turned up. I didn't even stage. find the student union until my senior year. Actually, my fifth year, because as a student athlete with a major like that, it's not abnormal for it to take you five years. I found the student union a week before I probated for a sorority of some sort that I won't name. Because <laughs> I love her okay. dearly, but I do not want to talk to yeah, anybody from corporate office headquarters. I don't want I them in the chat. I don't want them in the chat. Um, but yeah, no, that's, <laughs> that's when I found this. I was like, oh, this is where all the black people went. <laughs> I saw them like at the at the freshman orientation. I was like, black people, black people. Because I grew up like in a very like white neighborhood, went to a very white ha- high school. So I went to college. I was like, okay, this school has a, it was a PWI, but it was like one of the blue check PWI. So like black people like, yeah, yeah, but it's got, we had everything. And that a D9, that a, that a HBCU would have. So we had all, we said all the stuff. But when I got there, I was like, oh, look at all the black people. Yay. Um, and then I didn't see him again until either. Until you graduated. They, until I graduated, <laughs> unless they were athletes. And I was like, oh, okay. Okay. This must be all of us. Hmm. Then found the student union, like, when my last semester. And I was like, we have a chick for me? Look, I had a lot of discoveries. Because I never <laughs> made it to the student union. Were you staying on campus? Yes, I was an employee of the university. I look and then and then being pre med, like the College of what science, arts and sciences or whatever, was clear on the other side of campus. So all the fun stuff, you never saw the fun stuff. You never got there. It was international library, engineering building, sidewalk to the dorm. <laughs> I went I undetected. Love. Yeah. You were good. You were a good child. Look, people, take up North out of her page. Don't do it because I was a heathen. Was. Sorry. Yes. And an HBCU. And I also attended a PWI, but I was a heathen. Don't, I digress. I so. almost went to an HBCU and I was like, it's <laughs> either, I'm either going to become a brain surgeon or I'm going to like become one of the lead dancers in a Luke video. It's going to be one of the two. There's not going to be a middle ground. I accomplished both. No, I'm just <laughs> like interesting. Wish we'd known each other then. I actually yeah. had a multitask, boo. Look. <laughs> spring break is spring break for it's a reason. Up for <laughs> so I guess no. we won't be reviewing the Freak Nick documentary when it comes out. Look, child, I'm so glad that they did not have camera and video and Instagram and TikTok <laughs> was not a thing, baby, because look, these pictures and this stuff that's turning up from these people, you know, I live in Hot Atlanta where it was the home of Freak Nick, Hot baby. Atlanta. And when I tell you some people, mamas are on can- on pictures, they girl, who takes a picture of a what they, what they call the picture? What they call the old picture when they came out? A Polaroid. Who takes a picture of a Polaroid and then posts it on Instagram? If it's a Polaroid, let it say it don't need to be on digital. It don't need to be coming. It don't need to be seen. Leave it alone. Of somebody, mama busting it wide open and spreading it wide on the top of a car. Leave it alone. By the way, leave it alone. How you think you got here, Tyrone? How you think you got here? (laughs) And believe your daddy is who your mama say your daddy is. And leave it alone. Leave don't it be alone. going to check ancestry. You 26 years old. It don't matter who your daddy was. It don't it's make no the, difference no more. Just it leave doesn't. it alone. Whoever your daddy said he was, and he That's is, who he and was. He provided, just take it as he is. You got the brain so, name, yeah. you got the name brand cereal, didn't you? You weren't you weren't eating equate uh fruity pebbles. And you had Kool-Aid, not uh Save a Lot Aid or whatever aid. <laughs> Cheap aid. Now you know, you know you had cheap. The, 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 it was the cheap. It was the great, the cherry, the last. They didn't. They didn't say Kool Aid though. Okay, now this is how we know. Now you know what this. <laughs> you just proved that you had like a science major just now. 
Because you said grape, cherry, lime. You didn't say purple, red, green. No. <laughs> you named actual <laughs> flavors. Yes, yes. We want yes. the red kind and we want the purple we kind want the and red. we want the green kind. The green is gross. I don't like the green kind. Let's let's give a shout out to our little Christmas sweaters real quick. This is the most H Town my sweater of my life. This is the most H Town I've ever been. I H Town meets China because I got it from Timu. I thought this was very bad. I thought like, oh girl. Now I got two. I feel like that mm -hmm. was an accident. Um, but I also <laughs> feel like I shouldn't put her in the dryer. So I have a backup. Now let's get you a look at your tell Christmas. Me about your Timu experience yes so oh this my is gosh. my christmas stretch sweater i've had it for about four years now it used to light up but you know the batteries and stuff have died so yeah and the sweater yes but i love the i love the sweater though cute you miss my <laughs> you miss my dirty joke that's okay um no. it's super cute she was like no oh the job batteries are dead in the sweater you right yeah. <laughs> That's how you got how old is Max now? How old is your baby? He too. Uh -huh, yeah, because the batteries died. Ladies, keep your batteries charged. <laughs> now he's cute. Look, he's cute. He's a cute the alternative. Battery, the, battery, to the batteries, the batteries, batteries okay? are out right now. So Max might have a brother or sister to come <laughs> sometime. I'm just gonna send you a GoFundMe. I'm gonna send you and your uterus a GoFundMe. Look, ain't nothing wrong with it. We'll set that up two nights. Yes. Um, that link will also be in the chat. No, just kidding. In the <laughs> comment section. In okay, so let's say, speaking of the babies, I guess we'll, well, you know what? Let's start with Kitty Corner. Let's start with the, you know, Chris Kringle Kitty Corner. Um, okay. Because thanks to you and like my team at the Hot Cocoa Critic Factory. <laughs> Hot Cocoa Critic Productions. Uh, we curated a list of movies this season. And apparently, um, first of all, all of like our favorite big name entertainers. I'm going to say entertainers because we got rappers, we got actors, we got comedians. Um, they've all grown up and they have families. And so we're getting all excited mm -hmm. about these movies. Like there's a huge one coming out tomorrow night. The they're in, they're making material recording films or whatever, um, accepting scripts that they are proud to you know perform in front of their children. They are creating material for their children to watch, which is good. We love you know family stories, um, especially Christmas. It's good to see all facets of like what families look like. Um, during the Christmas season, because that, that was for a long time, not something we saw a lot of. It was always yeah. mommy and daddy and kiddos. And now we're seeing, you know, like, I guess I'll just get into it, like dashing all the way with ludicrous co-parenting, right? Yeah. And pretty amicable co-parenting, not necessarily um, amicable. It looked like they had some things they could work on. But in Dashing All the Way, we had um, Ludacris. Um, and it came out like a couple weeks ago. So you had Ludacris, you had Lil Rel, who played Black Santa. Ludacris played the father of this darling little girl in the mm -hmm. movie, um, whose name I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> we'll add her. We'll add her later. Um, but a darling little girl in this movie who steals, honestly, she steals the show. And um, and then he has a ex wife or partner. It's that... his wife. It's his current wife. Actually, oh, they're not. Me, I don't please. think that they are actually divorced. And that's what I like about it. To your point, yeah, yeah, is that these movies are not in the past when we were younger. You know, I think it was like this overarching thing to make everybody feel like everything was perfect, yes. if that makes sense. It Whereas does. I think now what we're getting more with the movies is it ain't perfect. It may yeah. not ever be perfect, yeah. but this is what it is and this is the real deal. And I think that's what you kind of get with dashing through the snow. Oh, it's dashing the realistic through the snow. Not dashing yeah. all the way. <laughs> Yeah, dashing uh through the dashing through the snow is you're getting that realistic view of this is real world. Look, stuff mm -hmm. happened, mm -hmm. and while I love you, we may not be able to be together. But guess what? We got this beautiful kid, and we may be in two separate places, 
but we're working on us to see if we can work our way back together with each other because we do have this beautiful family and while we love each other right now we just can't be together under the same roof Oh, and one thing I do want to acknowledge, and thank you for like pairing all that together while I pulled up IMDb. So mm -hmm. Tasha and I have been, we were talking before this, and I, I went through this a lot last season, and my co-host, Kiki, we would go back and forth. Like, sometimes she would know an actor's name, sometimes I would know an actor's name. One of the purposes of Hot Cocoa Critics is in African-American film and TV, we are good to run up on an actor if we bump into them in public or even if we're watching it on TV and be like, that's, um, oh boy from, um, that show, um, on BET, um, you know who I'm talking about? Yes, girl, um, see him in public, call him by the wrong name. So one of our missions, um, in Hot Cocoa Critics is to get to know our African-American actors that are not always like the Denzels and the Angela Bassett's, the ones we can name in our sleep. We want to like give the flowers and shout out to these actors who we've seen them in lots of projects, but we may not be able to name them. So like, as an example, um, Ludacris, who in, his name is Chris, but mm. in the movie he's played, he plays a social worker named Eddie and his wife, her name is Allison Garrick. So I do want to do a shout out to like these very like uh, neutral names. Right. Like, you know, almost as if the script was written for anybody, like anybody of any race could have played it. That's a part of like Tasha, our um, hot cocoa scoring system is that's part of it. Like, is this a film that can transcend or have crossover appeal if you care about that? Um, but in the movie, she is Tiana Paris. Oh no, her real name is Tiana Paris. Okay. Her stage name is Allison Garrick. The little girl who we are obsessed with, she plays a nine-year-old, which seems small, but I don't know how children ages, I don't know. They, what they can age. vary. Yeah, they can vary. You, know, you can yeah. go off the size. Yeah. No, <laughs> she plays a nine-year-old, which explains why she's so sharp and clever. Um, and her name is Charlotte in the movie, but her real name is Madison Sky Validum. V-A-L-I-D-U-M. I feel like we're going to see a lot of this little girl. I feel like we've already seen her in quite a bit. And then um, Santa is played by Nick, is named Nick, like for St. Nick. And that's Laurel Howery, which we know Laurel when we see him. And um, there's some politician, Oscar Nunez. But we don't see a lot of him throughout the film, but he is important. So last year, our top picks of 2022, here we go. Now make it know. good now. <laughs> yeah, no, no, no. Our top, so our top, hold on. Last year had quite a few good, I ain't gonna lie. I think every year <laughs> the movies have been getting better and better. I don't even they know. They have been getting, yeah. yes. It, thank you, Tasha. Yeah, every year they've been getting better and better. And our top picks last year, um, we had top three. So Black Jack Christmas, which was actually on Prime, I believe. And that, mm -hmm. that got five peppermint hot chocolates. So our scoring system is five peppermint hot chocolates. And the Wesley Christmas also got five peppermint hot chocolates. And then New okay. Orleans Christmas. So well, let me back it up. Wesley Christmas had Jasmine Guy. I know exactly what you're talking about. I you watched it. Was, you watched it. Watched Did you it. watch Black Jack Christmas? I don't remember that one. I'll have to look it up and see. With Don, so with know. Don Lewis from A Different World. I don't know why I feel like I did. I didn't know that was the name. Because she speaks with like a Ghanaian accent. She actually does like her own, her real accent. It was, okay. but you know what? It the production was not like. At the level of Wesley Christmas, it was definitely a, a lesser budget, but the story was so good. It was a sleeper for me. And I made it, I gave it five uh, peppermint hot chocolates. And then a New Orleans Christmas uh, with 4.5 peppermint hot chocolates. And remember that had Patti LaBelle in it. It had um, Keisha Knight Pulliam in it with her husband, Tony or Anthony Brown. And then- No, I watched that one. Yes, I don't know that one. I watched so I watched Wesley and I watched 
that one, the last okay. one that you're talking about. Yeah. Okay. Black and Jack, then, I didn't watch that one. I'm looking at the I, thing I, I now. I didn't like, see that one last year. Look, I feel like Black Jack slid under a lot of people's radar, and it's actually a really good movie. And then A Christmas Fumble got an honorable mention with a score of four peppermint hot chocolates and A Miracle Before Christmas. Um, a Christmas Fumble had Eva. Eva. I know that Marcel. one. Yeah, that was with, uh, what, Romeo in that one? No, not no, Romeo. No, Zach. It's uh, Zach. Yes, Zach Tiva, What's his baby. real name? Zach from Zativa. What's his real name? Do we know? Lovely Duvall. Duvall. <laughs> Yes, lovely Duvall lovely is what we've Duvall. decided. Mm -hmm. Lovely Duvall is the swag mm -hmm. with Zach, baby. Yeah. All day long. All day long. Shower what? Shower it look. <laughs> <laughs> Football comes in handy. Oh, what I got. <laughs> <laughs> yes, Lord. Talk about our fumble. I will always. <laughs> I, will put I, will always <laughs> I will run through the zone. Anyway. And then A Miracle Before Christmas. That was the one with Lil Romeo in it. And was that... um. Um, you know what? I always see him, Lil, Lil Romeo and Latoya Lucky. Yeah, Lil Romeo and um, what's his name? Bow Wow. They always oh, yeah. in my mind. I don't care how, no matter what it is, I just see them as little bitty boys. They're little boys. I can get beyond it. However, they are definitely grown men, and they have come a long way. <laughs> <laughs> And so when I see him for some really good how small he is, but he has a body yaddy on body yaddy 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 Um and he is he's amazing. He's an amazing actor, amazing young man. But I just can't get over it. I just can always I can't keep him in little boys on. I can't it can't cross over. I'm sorry. I'm with it. But I, I love them. You. I love right. the movies. We we support them growing up. Just our minds can't make the. Leap. I just can't go back. Yeah, it we can't. But in yeah, the spirit of storytelling, we accept it. Yeah, and, and I actually don't think I think how old is Romeo? Like in real life, something. like he's got, he late thirties because he ain't that far. The crazy thing is they're not that far from us. But I just because his little kid is mad. I just mm -hmm. feel like Master P more along I think, but Master P even older than us, so I get it. So I just don't know. I don't know. Master yeah. P older than Beyonce. Yes, he they old old. And he dated her, I think. Yeah, for a little bit. They dated for a little bit. Okay, so I just had to get that out um, about the 2022 top picks and the five peppermint hot chocolates. As a reminder, the five peppermint hot chocolate scoring system is like our version of five stars and peppermint hot chocolates, because one thing that I want you to look for um, in Christmas movies, Tasha, you and then our viewers is use of hot chocolates as okay. as a as a beverage of choice, as a fixer. Um, I find it personally very annoying that in like Hallmark movies and Lifetime movies, that they act like it's liquor when it's not. They're like, oh my gosh, you've had a bad day. I know what will fix it, a peppermint hot chocolate. And it's like, no, it won't. Put no, some Baileys in there or like, I don't know, cognac. I don't know. Um, but because of that, I've decided in a snarky way to make it the scoring system. So um, a part of that is glam, plot. Like, does the plot make sense? Is it easy to follow? Is it even rational? Were there aspects of the plot that kind of left us hanging? Like, wait, you brought in this whole other character and we didn't see them for the rest of the film. Why? Like anything. It's whatever you want it to be. Um, we also think about like no thuggerization, like no mm -hmm. unnecessary thuggerization, no unnecessary traumas. Like we as African-Americans, we endure enough as it is. I think we as Americans, as people, especially at the holidays, it's stressful enough. You don't want to watch like a holiday film that gets like mm -hmm. it takes you too. It too, takes you down too too far. Yeah, the and thing. then like, well, like there's I, yeah yeah we mind we don't mind the sad story, but we do mind the sad story. Like we don't want it Correct. to be to the point where it's like super depressing. I think that's Completely. the thing. Or Completely. either you do too much. Now, hence I ain't gonna mention what we talk. Well, I am, but I ain't right. We talked about another movie. We yeah. also looking at chemistry. 
Yes, and I will just chemistry. leave it at that because everything ain't got the chemistry that well. We trying to understand why, 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 why is it not human nature? Why is it not human? Why? why? <laughs> um, but yeah, so um, that's pretty much it. But definitely, I have my girl here, Tasha from Atlanta, because she, if she don't know nothing, she know whether or not a lace is laid. She know whether or not a brow is arched. She know whether or not an uh, outfit makes sense. She know whether or not a plot makes sense. Um, and so, yeah, we're going to talk about all that. So I just wanted to lay those ground rules down real quick. Um, and they're loosey-goosey. Like, you could just hate a movie because you hate it and give it one peppermint hot chocolate. And it may just not be for you. And it may just not. <laughs> Ooh, child. Okay. So we were talking about uh, dashing all the way. So tell me. um, Tell me definitely about like Ludacris and his reasons for not liking Christmas was because what like they got robbed when he was a kid and he on the same robbed. day it his was parents all about his got childhood. divorced. Yeah, his child yeah. separate. So it sounded like to me they were already having a difficult time. It seemed like okay. his mom and dad were probably already going through it. Yeah, but he was like in the middle of things, and I think they were gonna try. Like it seems like the dad came home. And they were going to try for this one Christmas to try to put things back together. But what ended up happening was <laughs> when Luda went to see Santa Claus, he told Santa Claus he didn't know Santa Claus was a crook. <laughs> oh, yeah. And so oh, he yeah. told him where they lived at, him being a kid, not knowing any better, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying, and gave Santa Claus his address. And the Santa Claus saw the bomber ring and some other stuff was like, Jackpot, I'm robbing them tonight. <laughs> I was so confused so, by that girl. I rewound it like three times. I'm like, wait, what is happening? Yeah. That's this what is not a movie where you can like do stuff in your house and you just gonna play it, right? Would you agree? This is a sit down around the TV kind you of movie. See, you want to pay attention to the little intricate yeah. details. Yeah. yeah. But that's what pretty much to sum it up, that's what happened. And so the guy came to rob them. And the mama had got all dressed up, had the little boy all cute. They was having a good time when his dad yeah. came home. His dad, but you could already tell his dad, it seemed like he was somewhat kind of over it. Like he was yeah. just like, yeah. you know, let me try to do it. Um, and I think the dude that actually played the dad is um, Keisha Napoleon's husband in real life. I don't know. Oh, his name. Anthony, the Anthony Brown guy, or are they still together? Yes. They still married. Yeah, they're married. That's her the, Oh, the wig and stuff. I couldn't tell. I was like, is that him? That's him. That was him. Okay. Yeah, okay. that was him. Uh, the husband. And yeah, you could kind of tell he was just kind of already old, but he wanted to try. Yeah. So I think that's what it was. But I think whatever happened with the Santa Claus and then that whole little fiasco just <laughs> ended things. And so with him being a kid, he is instead of looking at the bigger picture that is more to why his parents are not together than yeah. just it happened on Christmas, he's relating it and that's what he's carried with him this whole time. So that's why and he he's takes. like adamant about it too. Yeah, he's, and he's adamant. Very adamant. But what I thought was really interesting was that with him being like a social worker, he takes, in my opinion, a version of that Christmas spirit with him every day to work. He tries yeah. to make people feel better, make people happy, make sure that, and they do a very delicate way of talking about mental health because really they do address mental health in this movie um, they through do. Ludacris's job. But the way that they describe it is totally palpable for like children to understand. Yeah. And, and it keeps you out of, in my opinion, I mean, I don't have kids, but I'm, you know, I can read a room. <laughs> like it, yeah. It seems like it doesn't put you in a situation where you would have to explain something to a child that's nine, 10 years old that you weren't ready or hadn't talked to them about in a certain way. Or it just didn't just pop up on you in this movie that you thought was going to be fun, wholesome. P it's rated PG. So, because mm -hmm. um, even like Lil Rel, who plays uh, Black Santa Claus, which I think we're seeing a lot more of. I, now I did find his plot a little confusing because for the longest throughout the film, I couldn't tell if he was a legit Santa or if he was another like con man. So no, he was not a con man. He was a legitimate Santa. But yeah. I think what his thing was like, I think at first 
it was kind of hard to understand what was going on and why the senator and his people were after him at first. Yeah. Until you got to a little yeah. further down the movie yeah. where you got into the scene where it kind of explained and they went back and talked about what happened. Yes. Then you were like, oh, okay. Yes. But yeah, then it kind of, because up until then, it was kind of like, well, why are these people chasing you? You shady, shifty, shifty, shady, yeah, shifty, yeah. shifty, shifty. <laughs> like what's going Because then on? I was like, are those the reindeer personified? Like I was just confused on all the levels. I just, but you're yeah. right. Like I will say, th they maybe they tried to confuse us on purpose for a little bit. Yeah, but then they did tie it up nicely. They in tied the it end. together. Yeah, mm -hmm. towards the end. Yeah, but and it took you... a little minute at first. What did you think about like the co-parenting energy between him and Allison, Eddie and Allison, the main character? Well, you could tell like she, you could tell she loves him because even when she said the thing yeah. about, well, you can come on and come and get the peppermint tea maybe after you bring her back and we watch her. Like you could tell she's the parent where she's trying to, you know, work it out and trying to watch her. But at the same time, she ain't playing no games either because she ain't with the fugazi. <laughs> you know like the fake phony she like because when I think something happened she I think so I also think it was some other things that in marriage probably he maybe didn't know how to have a balance did you pick yeah. up on that yeah, because she was like are you working again like oh you, you found a way to work this anyway you found a work mm -hmm. work anyway so that mm -hmm. was part of the issue whereas no he technically wasn't working but right this is what happened so yeah, I think I think the the co parent, but that's why I think it comes in, and that's what I appreciated about the realness of it, because mm -hmm. that is a lot of people' issues. I mean, yeah, I'll be honest, is. I've had issues with balancing sometimes. So we all do. I, I think it. like work life balance, especially around the holidays, it becomes very difficult to decide. Like, is this the time to be with family? which feels like it has to be justified or is it time for me to like do something really important with my job that's popped up, which of course it would during the holidays. Like that's exactly yeah, it. That's now nice. what I did like was that he used his skills from work to resolve the issue with the Santa and the people chasing the Santa and helping Santa get his reindeer and all that. I thought, I thought that was good. Um, I thought Lil Rel did a very good job in the movie. I felt like, he contributed to the plot in a real way. It wasn't, you know, sometimes they have, especially with comedians, they don't always know what to do with us in a movie. Like they're like, you just going to bring the funny and be funny. Ha ha. And it's I think like, it was a good balance. Me too. Like he had like a real plot himself and it was tied to like Eddie Ludacris, like his character really well. Um, mm -hmm. And, and really put that onus on, like, still believing in, in Christmas and believing in the Christmas miracle. I would just say I'm, I personally, I don't think I'm alone in this. I'm so excited to see, like, the presence of Black Santa just in mm -hmm. the, com whatever you want to call it, the magic of Christmas, the commercial side yeah, of Christmas, commercial. the mm -hmm. fantasy mm -hmm. side of Christmas. Like, this was in, uh, <laughs> it's like a mirror the uh at home store and there were so many black santas and i look now now that i have him i do still have the receipt his eyes look a little he might cool. look a little cockeyed, but that's okay <laughs> a little lazy eyed but i grabbed him because he was black damn it <laughs> I was like, like, don't be, don't be bad because I got one that I'm about to put up uh, tomorrow. Is a black Santa that sit on our porch, so I understand. <laughs> Does he like a big one? He is. I'll take a picture and send them to you. He's not really like... big. He's like he probably he's about this tall. He probably about three feet because Max taller than probably gonna be taller than him this year. Yeah. But he about three feet. But he lights up and he sits right on our porch. My mom has a black Santa that is the size of my daddy that stands on the porch. Like, if you didn't know anybody, you would think my daddy would stand on that porch in a Santa costume. Ain't nothing it's, wrong with it. It's it's cute, but it's creepy. I want one. It's creepy. <laughs> uh, I'll find I'm out where just, she got it. Look, I was just excited. I took the stat. I took. I took the display last year because they was like, "Well, man, we have these other ones in the box. Is the other one in the box the same skin color?" I apologize, no. you too. 
They girl, they have black nutcrackers. That's the thing now. It's like nutcrackers are black, too. brown, yellow, peach, and they have them all. Yes. Um, okay, so what else about this movie should we mention? Because we can get to the scoring or you if you want, because you did mention peppermint tea, so we didn't have any hot chocolate sightings, I don't feel like in this no, movie. I didn't think I didn't but don't have ask any me. hot chocolate. Sorry. She said did she say hot chocolate with the peppermint in there? I can't remember. Because you remember she did address when she talked to him. She said, well, maybe when you come to drop her off, we can have, and I'll put extra mint in it. Was she talking about hot chocolate? I can't remember. I thought she was. She may have. So that but you said one. tea. I may I said tea, but I don't know why I think she was talking about hot chocolate. Not I may have to go back and look. Yeah, but that was towards the look. end where she was like warming up to the idea of him coming back, right? Yeah, like she was like, you could have, well, that was towards the beginning when she first, think about it, when she dropped her off. And she said, oh, good, you don't have to worry. She said, this is, you know, he's with you. She said, then maybe when you drop her out. She said, when, maybe when you drop her off, we yeah. can have, I, I thought she said hot chocolate with the extra peppermint. And he was like, oh, uh, okay. But then when she, because remember when she was, when she talked to them on the phone that time, mm-hmm. And she was like, what are you doing? And she said, well, how did you find some time to work? Well, when you come, just bring my daughter home. Remember? Ish. And she was like, bring her home. She said, bring her home. And oh, she girl. said, and it ain't no, it's not going to be no hot chocolate for you. She did say that. She, she did, did say that. that. Okay. Did say that. Okay. I'm going to defer to your expertise. And this is why. One, I was jet lagged from Charleston. It could be jet lagged an hour, an hour yeah, time I difference. Get I get it. I get it. I get it. Jet lag for Eastern to Central. I About to catch another flight. <laughs> Apple bottle making one a bite. Uh, no. Um, see, I got flewed out. So I'm yeah, like, I had jet lag. And I was like, mm-hmm. I am guilty. This is how I can say this is definitely like a sit down and watch it with the family movie because I was meal prepping, doing laundry. I was rewinding bits where I was like, I, I don't feel like I'm tracking anymore. So I had to go back. <laughs> so that's why I can say, okay, Tasha, I defer to you. If you say there was hot chocolate, I believe you. I, I believe look, it was. If, if any of y'all want to refute it, y'all saw it. Y'all know she said peppermint tea and not peppermint hot chocolate. Put it in the comment section, Put please. it in the comments. We appreciate it. Thank you. <laughs> and we will stand duly noted and corrected. Yes. Now, I want to know this because I would like to get your score on this um, because you were definitely the Chris Kringle Kitty Corner expert. Um, how many peppermint hot chocolate scores would you give this? Like, how many peppermint hot chocolates would you rate this? Oh, um, I felt like they had a nice budget. This. It was definitely a nice. It was Disney Plus. I think Plus, they had so. a nice budget. Budget. It was Disney Plus. Yeah. I love the fact that real was not overdone. Like to your point, I think yeah. he had a good. Like it was the comedic relief there. Yeah. But then it was also the balance where it was not too over the top. Because sometimes you can have some comedians where I feel like to your point, mm-hmm. they make them do too much. Yeah. And I don't feel like he was that. I feel like it was a good balance chemistry the chemistry was there i feel like with the whole cast even the evil people that was trying to get over i think it was a good chemistry (laughs) between everybody like it wasn't like awkward and 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 i'm saying that like you look you two y'all laughing at me because i'm i'm saying it because i keep thinking of this other movie that was just completely there's another movie we have an honorable mention y'all that she is she is itching to get out of her little system and we're gonna get to it too and also and also i will say down to like when the bad people got their butts kicked by the reindeer there was a little look for those of you who need like a little violence there was some there was some. It was enough. And I think like it was a- just right. I think that's why it came in as PG. Because it had like some adult conversation oh, content yeah. to a certain extent. But then it was still very family friendly. So it was a good that's why I said I feel like it had a good balance. The cinnamon um, reference the cinnamon reference made me laugh a ton. I love the cinnamon reference. And can I give it a four and a half hot? Yeah. It's a half. 
Okay. Yes. Oh, don't, we, don't get me wrong. I think it could have been some other things that could have been tweaked to make it completely perfect, but I'm in between that four and a half. I'm right at that four and a half. But it was good though. It was definitely good. Yeah, you can do you can do whatever you want. You can do a point seven five. I don't care. So was. you say so wait, so you say what for what is I it? Say dashing four, I say four and a half. I'm dashing through the snow. I would say four and a half. I probably mm. would give them five with a little extra. Only reason I'm not giving them the five is because I feel like they could have been a little clearer a little earlier. If that I sense. found the plot very confusing until it the was very a little end. confusing at first until it came together. I think they needed to tie that part. Yeah. Like you should have let us know yeah. ahead why they was yeah. chasing him. I'm telling That's my you only right thing. now. But outside I, of that, Disney. Mwah. There was a moment Amazing. where I thought that Rel was with the senator and the bad people, and I just, <laughs> I just, I mean, you used to you a bad Santa. <laughs> yeah, because I'm like, oh, so there's more bad Santas robbing people. So basically, no more mall Santas. I don't know. Well, yeah, so I'm going to give it, I'm going to give it an even four hot peppermint, met, what? peppermint hot chocolates, hot peppermint, peppermint hot okay. chocolates. I'm going to give it four even because okay. I, I like the message. I love the content. I felt like the entire family could get through it. As an adult person with no children, I could actually sit down and watch it again. I feel like um, I like the evolution of Ludacris, Chris. Yes, like he did him. a great ludicrous. The actors did a great job. They did a great um, job. Now, I'll be honest, the little girl, amazing to your point. I Stole agree with show. you. I think we're going to see a lot of her. Mm -hmm. I actually saw another movie that she was in um, this season. I uh, will let y'all know about that. But she was good. She's good. <laughs> She's amazing. Talent. She's good. And I, and I feel like I saw her in something else. I think she has last been. I year. I look at her. Yeah, she's she up was in, in a movie coming. last year, like an action movie or something. I, I believe know. she was too. I think she gonna be like the next. What's the little young girl that played in the movies? Uh, well, she's not young no more. She's grown. Yeah, but uh, who, who, the chick that came from Eve Bayou. Yeah, and she like has Megan grown Good. throughout. Jesse Moset Moet. Oh, Jesse Smollett. Yeah. So Millet Journey, sister. Journey, Journey Smollett. Journey. Yeah, she's going to be her. If yeah. that makes sense. Ooh, okay. You get what I'm saying? Because you remember yeah. she started young. Remember she was in she Eden did. Bayou. She was a little bitty girl. Little bitty girl. People thing. forget. And not a thing wrong and fine. And who's baby. the little girl that was in Blackish that's like blown up? Now she's, she's grown. Another, well, like, two of heck? them. Both of them. Because remember, the smaller sister with the glasses, Mercedes. That's what I'm I talking about. Her name. Yeah. And then the other sister that went on to the Shahidi. college part that's on Freedom. Uh, yeah, that's that, this young lady. Watch what we say. Watch her, baby. She coming. I know. I feel like they they totally like took Yara and said, "Hey, you're now Lisa Bonet. You're now you Denise, listen, and that's what." I'm You're serious. going off to your version of Hillman and whatever. And, and that girl's a Harvard you graduate. Doing... You know, she went to Harvard. Yes, I am. Very smart. Very intelligent. Yes, sister. Yeah. Okay, well, I want to yeah. I want to give you an opportunity as my dear friend to tell the public. You see my face. <laughs> I only have the bandwidth for so many children's films, people. Like, I do love them. I love the kids. Trick love the kids. But my God. What? That's okay. I'm gonna send Max over there to, we gonna, to get you in time. Oh my god, he's so precious. He could probably get me to do anything, <laughs> and I would do it. Um, I'll be like, come on, Auntie. Oh my god. <laughs> um, so two things. We have two assignments. One, first, you're gonna tell us about this movie that you absolutely love. I want you to sell me the movie. It's okay. on Netflix. It goes by one name, and then I we're gonna talk about the movie that we. Did so much care for. <laughs> <laughs> we didn't love it. We didn't love it. Um, and we would just like. And I wanted input. to love it. I did. We wanted. I really we were excited did. about it. I we wanted, wanted to. to love it. I was like, very excited. But we're gonna. We're gonna. We're gonna. That's. That's not gonna be a low note. It's just gonna be like a hey, crowd participation, please note. But first, okay, sell me on the movie Leo on Netflix. Okay, yeah, so for like all, five, guys, you had a hot five to do it too. Okay, look, y'all got to watch Leo, Adam <laughs> Sandler. That's all I can say. Adam Sandler, amazing. Yes, it is technically a kids' movie. I don't know what the rating is, but what I will say is 
Adam Sandler does a great job of giving you a kid's appropriate movie. Okay. But saying everything that grown-ups want to say within an appropriate manner. Even down to the song. You're like, did he really just say that? But yes, he did. But it's everything that we think in as parents. Like you, the parents, it's certain things as parents that we can't say. It's everything is IT. It's everything is IT and uncle that we ain't gonna say to no baby because we I don't want to hurt their feelings. But what yeah. I have come to realize, realize through this movie, Charlie, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. is that if you sing it, it makes it so much better. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'm with that. I'm with that. I feel like there was a moment in my childhood where somebody was like, you're going to get your ass whooped. Whoop. So go get me that stick off that tree. <laughs> and guess what? It make it go down a whole lot smoother. <laughs> Keep it up. That belt going to go pop, 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 pop. <laughs> whoop, whoop, whoop. That act. That act. That act. If you don't get in that bed and go get up, it will be your ass. See, when we do that, don't it make it how much better when you see action? So I'm telling you, this little lizard y'all called Leo, get with the game, baby. I'm telling you, it is so. And then not only that, it is. It's very positive. Mm -hmm. Um. All jokes aside, it is. It's a great movie. Okay. His the the theme throughout the movie is very positive. It's very encouraging. But he was being honest in yeah. a lot of stuff that he said to the kids. Yeah. And like I said, and I'm joking about it goes down a lot smoother when you're smiling and when you're joking. It does because it mm -hmm. does change. I mean, even with you know, you got nieces and nephews. I got a 21 yes. year old and a two year old. Lord Jesus. Oh man! But with that being said. When he was doing stuff and saying stuff, like, I'll be honest, y'all, I was starting to watch it because I had my two year old in the bed with yeah. me. And we sitting up on Sunday, just like, let me watch this and we want something to watch it with the baby. Never did I think when I first clicked on Leo on Netflix mm -hmm. that it was going to be what it was. Our child went to sleep on us. We still <laughs> up cracking up. <laughs> okay. And watching the movie to the end. It was truly amazing. Great movie, funny, real deal. But okay. stuff that we want to say as parents, but I think you tell her, you know, any child, not just parents, aunties, uncles, anybody, when you have kids, you're dealing with them differently. And you know, it's certain things we can and we mm -hmm. cannot say and how mm -hmm. we preference things and how we don't preference things because you don't want to hurt the kids' feelings. Yeah. But literally, he had a way to say so that it was like, yeah, that's what we want to say. You and don't know, but and it was saying, I'm going to give you an example of one, because he was singing one song, and he was like, well, we don't want to hear you crying. <laughs> like, yeah, that's a real deal, because we don't give a shit. <laughs> and let me tell you, even the strangers in public don't want to hear you crying. <laughs> we were in line to get on the plane, and there were some crying little kids, and they were cute, but ooh, they were crying, and they were loud, they were whiny. And I was like, they better not sit But you don't us. want to hear it. They don't want to hear it. Come and some lady now. who we didn't even know goes, I bet they're going to sit in the seat. I pray they sit in the seats right behind y'all. And my husband said to a woman he didn't even know, he goes, damn you! Like that, like, please don't. <laughs> I was like, oh my God, you just cussed <laughs> out this white lady in the airport. And she giggled. Everything is fine. Um, so See, when you sing it, don't it make it better? <laughs> it made it better. I was like, oh my God, she's gonna sue us. But she but giggled. No, that's my it. She loved yeah, it. That's like, my it. That's it. Okay, oh, then yeah. I'll watch it. I'll watch to. it. Because like, these little it. kids are complaining. We and look, we too, us too, we and on a very real note, we do talk about like childhood trauma and like maybe how being disciplined or told about ourselves has made us feel and stuff we've carried with us through our lives as adults or young adults or whatever. So it sounds like this is a very fun movie. And look, I love Adam Sandler. I mean, he when you told me it was an Adam Sandler film, I was like, okay, cool. I'm good. I'm with it. That's kind of all I needed to hear. I love like trying to guess voiceover, like who's doing the voices in these um, cartoons because voiceover is like a secret, secret, like, dream of mine to do voiceover myself but um okay cool you, you would be good Leo. at that too you would be a freddy i can see you being a freddy that's the one thing i love about freddy, a freddy? Out of, uh, freddy from different world 
Oh, she, oh. You know she do all, that's Rugrats. <laughs> she baby. does. She's Rugrats, honey. Yes, and the oh, proud yeah. family. Yeah, yes, honey. She that's should've. pretty. That's why we don't ever see her because she's rich and all she has to do is put her hair up in a messy curly bun and record hit record. Um, yep, that's correct. I did take a voiceover acting class uh, back in July. I could get a demo tape done like tomorrow. I just yeah, sort it all out. Uh, okay. Now let's get to the other movie that Best we should not Christmas remind. Should we ever remain nameless? On... <laughs> no, we're going to name her. We're going to name her. We're going to call her by her name. Best Christmas ever with Brandy Norwood, uh, starring Brandy Norwood and Heather Graham and Jason Biggs. Heather Graham has been in so many movies. Like, I can't even. There's a big one that it escapes me, and I forgot to look it up earlier. Sue me. Jason Biggs was in it was in American Pie. Like we all know him from American Pie. And then for any of you who watched Orange is the New Black, he played that dear sweet husband. Um mm -hmm. one of the prisoners. Prisoner of the ladies. very first one to get locked up. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and his wife was the uh one of the one of the actors from this that 70s show. Like, oh my gosh. Yep. So and then the dude who plays the um the, the Ravishell people uh, from Ruthless. Ruthless. Yes. Tyler he plays, Perry, yeah, he plays and Brandy's like husband. Yeah. I, can I just go ahead and say it? Go for it. I'm, I'm going to I'm gonna look up Heather Graham, which she's been in while you're talking, because we got to get this off our chest. We got, we got stuff to do, so go for it. I wanted to love it, guys, but I just... I, I couldn't. It was just... It was... It was just too much. <laughs> <laughs> the chemistry, unfortunately, was not there. And I hate to say this because I love to hear Brandy sing. I think that was about the best thing. Of <laughs> to hear her sing the last one. And wait, she didn't, she didn't sing till the end of the movie. And she did. Uh, look, that's my point. She sung at the last part of the song, the show when it was going off. And I hate to say it, that was the best part. <laughs> look. No, oh, yeah. I so heaven broken. Heather Graham's been in Boogie Nights and she's been in uh, Austin Powers and other stuff. It was just too, it was like they were trying to force this plot and trying to make, I well feel said. like they were trying to make it other movies into one. I don't know. I don't know exactly. No, 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 no. Keep that energy. It. Keep that energy. What other movies do you feel like they were trying to make it? <laughs> I don't know. It was just a combination. It just was not right. And it, it didn't work. That's all I can say. It just did not work because, so yeah, it just it did not work. I That's feel like I they tried say. to make it a mix between like an Uncle Buck, um, a National Lampoon, uh, it was maybe a, a little bit of Miracle bunch. on 34th Street. Look. A little home gonna, alone cause when I'm, the little boy ran away. Okay, I, you know you what, had, Tasha? Look, you had a missing child that you tried to mix in the past sympathy. Let me let me you went. know what? And I'm and I'm gonna say it because you're you're new to the hot cocoa critic nation. Um, so I'm gonna I'm gonna open up a door for you. And if you want to walk through it, walk through it or don't. <laughs> I have a couple of notes. One. The kid had a toy called Monkey Bob. I feel like the Monkey Bob toy was a little insensitive. And I'm just going to leave it there. And the toy, it was like a weird, it was weird. It was like, ooh, Monkey Bob. Because they talked about Monkey Bob at least two or three times before they actually showed you the toy. And I was like, oh. Huh. But you had like this white couple talking about a Monkey Bob. I'm just going to leave it at that. Also, and you go into a black family house. And you, just let's be real. Well, uh, look, not just a black family, because let's be real. It was my, it was Brandy and her husband, who is Hispanic. So it of was the, just yeah, like of the still, diaspora. Going, yeah, to a house. Yeah, so it was just a little because different. this actor has played every race of person that's of color that we've ever seen. Like he, I honestly don't know what his nationality is. Um, I don't know he, what his nationality is in real life either. I don't. I don't, I don't even know, know if he's. I don't even know what he really looks like. 
With, for whatever reason, they keep putting like all this prosthetic hair on him, like wigs and mustaches and lace eyebrows. I don't get it. Um, but the other thing I was going to say was they did their best to portray like Heather Graham. So, OK, we'll lay the plot out for y'all. But we, here's the point. We really want y'all to comment in the chat. Um we want about. you to watch it. We and want you to watch it. And if you've watched it, tell us if you liked it or not. Because we thought the chemistry... Tasha's been bringing up chemistry because she thought the, the chemistry was terrible. It was just weird. I agree. I didn't think that, that Jason Biggs and Heather had Heather Graham had any chemistry. I personally didn't think that Brandy and Heather Graham had any chemistry. I Here's what I will say I appreciate. There's a couple things. I'm going to keep it positive because in Hot Cocoa Critic Land, we keep it real, but we try to end it on a high note. One, Brandy's wigs were laid. Oh, she, her hair was amazing. It took me a minute to figure out, like, what is it about Brandy that I'm like, I feel like she's missing, like, a facial feature or something. It was that she didn't have braids. We are so used to Brandy having locks braids whatever when we see her in a wig it's not the first time we're just kind of thrown mm -hmm. off like it's a little oh, yeah, different it, it's just a little different and then they did do this one thing that is my biggest pet peeve when you take what is that like a deep wave to like a curly wig or whatever and then you pin it to the side like and you just do to the this. side mm -hmm. we know that there's a pin back there stop it Oh, I can't stand it. It's not cute to me. But most importantly, here's what we're going to tell you. And it's going to be major spoiler alert. So, like, if you were waiting to watch this movie on Christmas Eve while, like, putting a strings of popcorn on your Christmas tree, forget it. Pick a different movie, all right? Drink your white Russians and string your popcorn to So Fly Something Christmas, else. which we're going to cover <laughs> next um, in our next episode. But... They hit a whole dead child. And he and, tried to, yeah, that was just. Yeah. And they did this thing where they made Brandy the rich black lady and Heather Graham the poor ish white lady. Or struggle yeah, they were friends. struggling. Struggle friends. They did like a, struggle. They, were, they just hadn't so got to where they wanted to be in their life. Yeah. It was just a bit much. It was just we too did. much. It was too much plot. And they were just trying to tie every. It was just. It just was not there. No. I would say that it was too much plot. Well, it was said, too. Actually. It was actually like they were trying to do almost like two or three stories in one. It was just too much. Fact. Yes. Too I, many stories. I second. Lines. I second all that. So that's going to get an honorable mention. We on. We honorably just mentioned it. Yeah, but we want your opinion. So we want go your look at it and let us know. Talk to us. <laughs> We want to make sure it ain't just us. So to conclude for Chris Kringle's <laughs> Christmas Kitty Corner edition. <laughs> <laughs> of Hot Cocoa Critics. La 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 la. Um, we give Dashing Through the Snow an uh, average score of a four. A four, yeah. Is that not how that math works? Yeah. And Leo, she gives it a recommendation a score five. of a five. Oh. And we give Best Christmas Ever an honorable mention, a brown mention. ribbon, a pink ribbon. Yeah. Oh, my gosh, Tasha, thank you so much for joining me tonight. You have been a dream. Will oh, you? Thank you, man, for having me. You will come back. Will you come back? Was this terrible? Was this totally hard? No, it was fun. It was fun. It was so Yay. fun. Because I love Christmas. I love movies in general. I'm a movie buff, so I love movies. Me too. This is a place for movie buffs to come. Like, this is a place for people who love TV, who love movies, who may even say, look, I might be further along in life if I didn't love TV so much. This is your safe space. We will geek out over movies and unpack whatever we want. Um. So, yeah. So, maybe... Uh, if you're interested in critiquing another movie, I'd love it. And y'all, this is the season premiere. Boop, boop, boop. We've concluded yes, it. Hi, Coco Critics. Tasha from Atlanta. Thank you so Thanks much for, for joining me, me tonight. And I will see y'all later. Hi, Coco Critics. Blah, 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 blah. <laughs> Happy holidays. Happy holidays.
happy holidays.